Good afternoon, viewers. Got a really quick update for you folks regarding Ariane 6 and everything that took place on this flight. Ariane's boss was confronted with a near impossible mission yesterday, and that was to put this new rocket through its paces and to have it do everything everything that it was designed to do, including a very complicated orbital trajectory that would have it release a couple of payloads in the first stage and then have the upper stage relight a couple more times to deploy additional payloads and then finally to have the upper stage re-enter the atmosphere, which is a new feature which few launch providers emulate. So, is this something that went well? Was it a successful mission? Well, for the most part it was, but things went south at the end of the mission, unfortunately. And this is something that Ariane Spas can ill afford. Quatre, trois, deux, un, top! Allumage 2 SR, décollage! So lest you think that SpaceX is the only company that I talk ill about when there's some sort of problem with the mission, well, Ariane's boss is not going to escape my discerning eye. And unfortunately, this is a company that simply could not afford any problems whatsoever with this mission because they are so far behind in every important respect. They have lost critical customers and also very high profile ESA missions to the planets all to SpaceX because they haven't been able to get this rocket into service. That being said, Ariane 6 definitely has a full schedule of customers in front of it. Definitely a lot of launches, not nearly as many as SpaceX would carry out, of course, but if you combine all of the scheduled launches over the next year and a half and then add in all of the Kuiper launches that Ariane 6 is supposed to be carrying out, well, they certainly have enough paying customers to stay in business as long as this rocket proves to be efficient and reliable. Now, if this was a Kuiper deployment mission, it would have gone perfectly because everything that went wrong with this mission happened at the tail end. At the beginning, things could not have looked more impressive. You have, of course, the Vulcan 2.1 engine that's powered by liquid hydrogen and oxygen with the rocket relying on its P120C solid rocket boosters to provide the vast majority of the thrust, at least at the start. Each one of these P120Cs delivers 3,500 kilonewtons worth of thrust, and it had two of them, as opposed to 1,370 kilonewtons for the Vulcan 2.1. And all the way up to solid rocket booster separation and the main engine cutoff, everything was perfect, the trajectory was nominal, and things kept going very much that way for a considerable amount of time. You had booster separation, fairing separation, and by the way, look at the quality of this imagery. Prior to this mission, Ariane's boss has been notorious for not showing us one damn thing. However, an Irish company called Rialtra, and keep in mind, Ireland is a member nation of the European Space Agency, they provide the, the cameras that gave us a lot of this imagery, cut in and out from time to time, but still, the images we got were absolutely stunning. So, all the way up to main engine cutoff, there were no problems in the upper stage separation. That went well also. And then the critical moment at 7 minutes and 50 seconds, the point where a lot of new rockets fail, that is to say the ignition of the upper stage, well, the Vinci engines on the second stage 
definitely lit without any significant problems, and this required the power, power up of a new addition to the upper stage called the Auxiliary Propulsion Unit. Now, the Auxiliary Propulsion Unit, or APU, provides the necessary energy to light and relight these engines. And the reason they're doing this is because the Ariane 6 has a new capability of multiple payload deployment into multiple orbital configurations, and then the upper stage can deorbit itself by means of another light up of the Vinci engines, again, driven by the APU. At least that's the theory. So let's see how everything went with this particular feature of the rocket. At seven minutes and 50 seconds, we had our first Vinci boost, as I said before, and then a cutoff at 18 minutes and 32 seconds. Then after that, we had a second boost of the Vinci engines at 56 minutes and 20 seconds, and a cutoff at 56 minutes and 42 seconds. So a slight adjustment in trajectory there. And then the APU cut off at that point, having done its job very well at one hour, five minutes and 36 seconds into the mission. Again, this is far beyond what most rockets would be expected to do. And then you would have the first separation of the various CubeSats on board. There were quite a number of them. The OOV Cube, the Curium-1, Robusta 3A, and the initialization of a couple of other satellites called White PSAT and Peregrinus. And then second separation command followed only three seconds after that for the CAT4, IST SAT1, GRB Beta, and the initialization of a couple more, the SIDLOCK and the Parasat. Then there was a third separation command for the Curie and the Replicator at one hour, six minutes, and two seconds. Then, at that point, the APU was supposed to power up again and then cut off again as part of a demonstration of the upper stage's capabilities, then power up again and do a third boost of the Vinci engines, whereupon there would be a cutoff of the Vinci engines, and of course a cutoff of the APU at that point, and the final payloads would deploy. The Nix Bikini, which is a payload owned by the Franco-German German company, the Exploration Company, and by the way, I've reported on them a number of times because they are working on a reusable capsule that's designed to provide resupply to low Earth orbit space stations. As a matter of fact, the Vast Corporation may be familiar with them. They're putting up a space station soon. They have contracted the Exploration Company to provide resupply to their space station. A lot of confidence in this new emerging company, but unfortunately, this particular mission was supposed to test the Nix's heat shields, and well, if you pardon the pun, that part of the mission got nixed because the APU never powered up again at 1 hour and 14 minutes and 12 seconds as it was supposed to. So very, very disappointing at the tail end because it was these multiple power-ups and multiple relightings of the engine with the ability to keep changing orbital trajectories that was supposed to set Ariane 6 apart from a lot of the competition, especially if we're talking about orbital sustainability or space sustainability. The ability to deorbit your upper stage to essentially add nothing more to the space junk that's already up there, which is something that just about every other launch provider does on a regular basis. Keep in mind, the Falcon 9 upper stage does not get deorbited. It just kind of gets added to the mix, at least for a while, until its orbit eventually decays depending, of course, on what it deployed. If it's an orbit that's a little bit higher, those upper stages stay up there for quite a long time. This is something that Ariane 6 will not be doing, at least assuming that this new technology works eventually, which I'm pretty confident that it will. But losing this exploration company payload was devastating. Also, another capsule on board was the Space Case SCX-01. That was not quite as critical, simply because Ariane's boss actually 
owns that capsule. It's kind of a new heat shield technology that they were making use of. So really only one customer is going to come out of this very angry. And the exploration company has already made the decision to move their business over to the Indian Space Agency and SpaceX anyway. So really, Ariane's boss had lost that customer anyway. So overall, the impact to this company was pretty minor. And by the time the next mission comes around, I am very confident that they will have this APU issue resolved. And by the way, the next ish, uh, mission rather is set up for the fourth quarter of 2024, the CSO-3 mission, which is mostly a French space agency mission. And then after that, you have lots of gas Galileo payloads being deployed for the European Space Agency in 2025, along with an Intel SAT mission also in 2025. But I am happy to report that Ariane Spas will be taking on these important ESA science missions very soon, the most exciting of which is going to be the Plato Space Telescope in 2026. This is a telescope specifically designed to look for rocky extrasolar planets, in other words, planets like ours in the habitable zone of yellow dwarf stars, which is very much like ours, and also subgiant stars and red dwarf stars. The first telescope ever specifically designed to search for planets like Earth. Very, very excited to see that happen, and that's just one of a number of high-profile ESA missions that Ariane 6 is going to be taking on. So, is this new rocket really all that competitive? Well, no. Is it reusable? No. However, will it be relevant in the future? I say yes, especially given how successful this mission was overall. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and also please check the description for various ways to support this content, and as always, stay angry about space.